In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Once again, Holy Mother Church is about to usher in the great holy season of Lent. So Wednesday, as she imposes the ashes on all of her children, she gives to them the somber reminder. She says to them, remember, man, that thou art dust, as the ashes are imposed, and unto dust thou shalt return. To the world lane, these words mean very little. And although during life, these words carry a little weight, there will be a time, however, that the truth of these words will become understood with a piercing clarity when it is finally announced to the worldling that death is at the door. The scales will suddenly fall from the eyes of this poor soul and what was previously so obscure will now be seen with great light. Now he will see and understand that the world and all that is in it will turn into dust. And all that matters is his immortal soul. It will be suddenly very clear. It is the wish of Holy Mother Church that every year at the beginning of this holy season of Lent, that all of us, all of her children, contemplate our mortal existence in order to see it for truly what it is. That is, in the light of faith. For if we can see our life in the eyes of faith, all things in the world will be seen in a very different light. And to receive but a little glimmer of this light does affect the greatest change in the soul. You will order your life, you will prioritize your activities very differently if you have but a glimmer of this light. And this glimmer is what Holy Mother Church prays for, for all of us. And thus she begins the holy season in this way. And with this, little, with this light, with this little glimmer of light, how easy then will be our work during Lent? If we have this understanding and this light of faith, we will all be very earnest to profit from this holy season, this short time of grace. So let us then comply with the wishes of Holy Mother Church and contemplate, just for a few minutes here this morning, our mortal existence, but in the light of faith. And what does Holy Mother Church say to her children of this mortal life? How does she want us to see our life in the eyes of faith? Taking up the words of our blessed Lord, she says to all of us, What doth it profit a man if he gain the whole world and suffer the loss of his own soul? This great maxim has conducted so many souls to heaven and has bestowed so many saints on the church. For what doth it profit to gain the whole world, which is going to pass away very quickly, and then lose the soul, which is eternal. It does not pass away. And what is this world 
but a short scene playing out which quickly passes away. St. Paul says, the fashion of this world passeth away. Death approaches. The curtain falls and the scene closes to begin another scene. And soon enough, all comes to an end. Everyone has a scene. It will play out briefly and ushers in the new scene. And alas, at the hour of death, how will all these worldly things, how will this earth appear to a Christian? All the precious objects upon which he has placed so much value and protected during his life, those empty pieces of furniture which are now surround him as he is dying, those trinkets and vessels adorning the room, he is about to face his judge and none of this will matter to him anymore. And all of these things will appear as empty as air. Thus does St. Teresa of Avila say, nothing therefore ought to be considered of consequence which must have an end. Thus holy King David contemplating these earthly goods at the hour of death Side, that they will seem as the dream of them that awake. For what a disappointment is there in such a dream for one having dreamt of happiness and repose and prosperity suddenly awakes as the dying sinner and finds himself on awaking about to be deprived of all of these things and worse yet, he foresees his eternal punishment. Now what do the great ones of the world have to say of our mortal existence? And they will say, they will tell us, there are no places of honor, there are no pumps, there are no pleasures, no amusements that will console a Christian at the hour of death. None of this consoles you. The great King Philip, Philip II of Spain, while dying, he cried out, Oh, that I had been a lay brother in some monastery and not a king. And his son, expressing similar sentiments as he was dying, Philip III, he said, Oh, that I had lived in a desert. For now I am about to appear with very little confidence before the tribunal of God. The eminent servant of God, Sister Marguerite, who was daughter of the Emperor Rudolf II, speaking of her father's kingdoms, said to herself on entering the convent, she said, now, what will all of these kingdoms avail me finally at the hour of death? Nothing. And she became a discalced nun and a great and holy nun. Saint Francis Borgia, you know, served at the court of the great Isabella of Spain. And some of you know the famous story of his conversion, he had to assist at the funeral of this great queen. It was his official duty to open the coffin to bear witness to her identity. And the countenance of this great queen, which he had previously known to be so beautiful, was already fast decomposing in the heat. Francis, shocked at the sight of her corpse, he lamented and said to himself, it is thus then that the grandeurs and the crowns of this world terminate. And it was this event, in fact, which induced him to leave the court. He left the court, renounced the world, and became the great saint that he did. 
Thus says St. Alphonsus, all earthly goods acquired during life at the hour of death and generally end in remorse of conscience and fears of eternal damnation. And speaking in the person of the dying sinner, Alphonsus continues, O oh God, I have had sufficient light to direct me to withdraw myself from the world, but yet I have followed the world and the maxims of the world. And now what sentence will be pronounced upon me? Fool that I have been, I might have been a saint with all of the means and all of the advantages that I enjoyed. I might have led a happy life and union with God and the state of grace. And now what do I find from my past life? But he continues, when does he say this? When does he say this? It is too late. He says, only when the scene is about to close and himself about to enter eternity. It does well for all of us sometimes to, comp to contemplate the lot of famous persons who were beloved by the world and who have been taken suddenly from this world. They were known and esteemed by the world either for their honors bestowed upon them or for their wealth. And where are they now? It is good to contemplate what remains of these honors and what remains of these riches. And they would answer, nothing, nothing. And if these unfortunate souls are in fact damned, they would say to all of us, we have nothing but now an eternity of torment and despair. All has passed away except our punishment. What, they will say, hath pride profited us? Or what advantage has fame or riches brought us? All those things are passed away like a shadow. And they are locked away forever, crushed in the confined heap of the damned, never able to move from that position for all eternity. That is the lot of the damned. And then do all worldly things appear as they really are, vanity and dust. Speaking in the person of this dying worldling, we find in the, in the Book of Wisdom these words, we are wearied in the way of our iniquity. We are tired out with life, yet the way of the Lord we have not known. So typical of the life of the sinner. Wearied with his life, all the turmoil, turmoils and problems of life, and yet, and yet at the end, nothing to show. And the way of the Lord he has not known. He, in the Book of Wisdom, it continues, What hath pride profited us, and, or what advantage hath the boasting of riches brought us? All those things are passed away like a shadow, and like a ship that passeth through the waves, Whereof, when it is gone by, the trace cannot be found, nor the path of its keel in the waters. Or as when a bird that flieth through the air, the passage of which no mark can be found. Or as when an arrow is shot at a mark, the divided air presently cometh together again, so that the passage thereof is not known. So we also being born forthwith cease to be and have not been able to show no mark of virtue, but are consumed in our wickedness. And thus the scene is closed. And it moves on to the next scene and to the next. Therefore, it is for this reason that Holy Mother Church gives to all of us on Wednesday the somber reminder of death to begin the holy season. There's nothing more efficacious than witnessing a death as to unmask the vanity of this world. 
O oh, great, the secret of death, says St. Alphonsus. How does it destroy all worldly desires instantly? How does it expose all worldly grandeur as smoke and deceit? Things the most desired of this earth lose all their splendor when beheld from the bed of death. The shadow of death obscures the beauty of all things here below. Of what avail, he says, are riches when nothing remains but a winding sheet for the body to be put in the grave? Of what avail is bodily beauty when all is reduced to a heap of worms? Of what avail is the power of authority when nothing remains but to be thrown into the grave and forgotten by all? So says St. Chrysostom, go to the sepulcher, contemplate dust and worms. Go to the sepulcher, go to the cemetery. Spend five minutes before the grave and look upon it as your grave. And thus, St. Alphonsus continues, look on the graves of the dead, see those skeletons gnawed by worms crumbling into dust, and say with a sigh, such must I become, and why do I not think of this? Why do I not think of this? Why do I not give myself to God? And alas, who knows, but that the sentiments which I am now hearing may be the last call for me. And if the poor, this poor dying sinner, has all the riches and all the wealth, what happiness does this give to him in the end? He's traded all for this. And what does he obtain? Not even happiness in this life. He has only affliction now and turmoil. So Solomon says, all the goods of this earth are only vanity and affliction of spirit, since the more anyone possesses of them, the more he suffers. And St. Philip Neri calls such persons fools, he says, whose hearts are attached to this world. Fools because even here, they lead miserable lives. We must not think that to detach oneself from the things of this world, to give up sin, in order to love God, is to live a discons disconsolate or unhappy life. We must not think that. It is, we are sorely mistaken. Who on this earth is so contented and happy as that one soul that loves Christ with his whole heart? You will find no happier soul and find one among all the rich persons of this world who is more happy than this hidden soul that gives itself entirely to God. And you will not find. I leave you with this short sentence of St. Teresa. St. Teresa of Avila, she says, all, all of our faults, all of our attachments to the goods of this earth arise from a want of faith. The reason we do not heed the words of Holy Mother Church at the beginning of every Lent is owing to a lack of faith. So let us go in, to God in prayer, especially in meditation, and ask him to reanimate our faith so that we can see, so that we have a glimmer of this light, which we will have, at the hour of death, we will see it. The time will come when we will see it. So it is better that we see it now. And I recommend to all of you that you spend 15 minutes these first days of Lent in contemplating these eternal truths. And rest assured, these 15 minutes that you spend on Ash Wednesday will be the most valuable minutes of your life as God will give you the light to see with the eyes of faith and the will to live out the remainder of your days accordingly. Remember, man, thou art dust, and unto dust thou shalt return.
God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.